high debt levels and weak job prospects have made it hard for many young, educated Americans to buy homes. And that could be a drag on the housing market for years to come, say some. Missed payments on student loan debt damage credit store scores, making it harder and more expensive to get mortgages. Debt also counts against millennials when lenders calculate how much money they'll lend. Every dollar of student debt payments means less available for housing. In addition, more grads are moving home to live with their parents, 36% according to the recent uh, Pew survey. And while that saves on living expenses, it limits their ability to build the credit histories they need to eventually get a mortgage. Joining us now is real estate expert Mark Bloom. Mark, good morning. Morning. How are you doing? I'm fine. You know, I just saw uh, last night on the news uh, a statistic about uh, how much the student loan debt has increased since '09, and it was staggering. It's berserk. Yeah, nuts. I mean, it really is. That is a big, a big cog in the works that isn't functioning properly right now. It's causing, as you spoke about, debt to income levels to be uh, a bit out of what the lender would like to see, and lenders have, have recently been asking more than they had in the last decade, let's say, up until the bubble. Yeah, so ever since that crashed, uh, it's, it's much more difficult to get a, to get a mortgage. The, uh, the lenders are asking tougher questions, and they're putting well, they a want to see, They want to see more income. Yeah. The market segment we're speaking about are younger Americans who don't have the life experience to have seen cycles in the real estate market, and they're very trepidatious about buying because they do enter the market with their lowest in earnings in, ter in terms of income, highest debt, as we just talked about in terms of loans, and they are always looking for better earning prospects. So the flexibility of renting also makes it very attractive for them if they get a better job off. Uh, if, if they go out and rent rather than living in their parents' home, they can build up that credit history uh, as long as they, they make the payments on time. Yeah, I'll be honest. I'm, I'm, I don't necessarily buy 110% into that. We um, deal with people all the time, net worth realty. We deal with investors. And, and so we deal with people who are coming out of, you know, maybe bumps in the road sometimes that they had in their credit from investing previously if they got caught. And you can build your credit history substantially with uh, credit cards, get a target card, buy, go, pay it immediately after you purchase, like pay it, then walk over uh, and pay off the card. You can build your credit history. Does it, is it nice to have a mortgage? Do lenders like to see that? Yes, but I don't think that is ideally the biggest, uh, or I mean, I don't think that is uh, necessarily the biggest stumbling block. Mark, how long does it take to reestablish good credit after it's gone on the negative side? So that's, uh, you know, credit is, excuse me, credit is one of those things that's kind of a black hole. Uh, no one really knows the algorithm exactly that they use to, to establish what your FICO score is. However, uh, depending on how big a setback you suffer, you can get pretty well uh, established in a couple of years. So two years, usually you can be past the point where uh, anything nasty that happened will be discounted a little bit. Um, and then things stay on your record. Uh, I want to say it's, it's it's six years, maybe it's seven years they're on your record, uh, at your, your credit record, and then they disappear. How about those that found themselves upside down after the uh, the bubble burst in the, uh, the uh, real estate market and uh, they decided to walk away from a bad scenario? Yeah, you do have that, the strategic default, right? Yep, and and yep, that's not discounted yep. at all. You know, banks don't go, oh, that was a wonderful business decision. <laughs> no, they, they, they just look at it as it's a, it's a strategic default and you didn't pay your debt. So those people, we have people that we deal with that are like that, uh, especially in net worth because it is an investment brokerage. Uh, but, again, those people are going to be required to bring more to the table. They're going to have to have more skin in the game, so to speak. In other words, instead of an 80% loan, they may only get a 50 60 or 70% loan. Mm. That makes it safer for the bank. Um, but worst case scenario, they're going to have to wait two years to seven years for that to either lighten their load or clear their bureau. Very good. Mark, thank you very much. Have a, uh, yeah, my pleasure. Have a, have a great day. Thank you. You too. Mark Bloom, he's a real estate expert. Some other stats here. Uh, because of what's going on, the, these uh, young people, it's more difficult to, uh, to build up your credit history. The result is a decline in the percentage of 18 to 32-year-olds heading uh, and buying their own homes. Just 34.3% of the, uh, as of this past March, according to the Pew Research Center, versus 36.1% back in 07 before the, the bubble burst. Wow. 
617 here on 600 KCOL.